sex. One of the most natural things in the entire world, but also one of the most awkward things to talk about. So incredibly ironic how something is so natural, yet so avoided in conversations because people just feel like they can't talk about it. Sex. It's sex. It's just babies. Something almost everybody will take part in and also the part before that is something everybody will take part in because you can't, as hard as you try, avoid adolescence, growing up, boobs, vaginas, willies, periods. Like my hair is a big period. So seeing as I'm at the age of 19 years old and seeing as a lot of you guys are either younger than me or female or just probably curious little human beings like I was at your age, I decided it might be important to talk about sex and talk about these weird little topics that get hidden away under the rug because people are too awkward to talk about them. I thought it'd be cool to do a little Q&A to do of this sort of stuff. <laughs> No, I'm not a sex god. No, I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm not a guru. I'm not a genie that comes out of a lamp when you rub it a few times. Although that does kind of sound like an innuendo for this type of video. Rub, rub. I just kind of want to make talking about this sort of stuff more normal. Like when you say sex, something doesn't explode or, I don't know, nothing happens. It's just something we all kind of avoid, especially when it comes to parents and the talk. So I put on my Facebook page, which is a reason why you should like my Facebook page because I get you involved in videos and stuff, link in the description, to pose me some questions related to sex and things you might want to know, things you might get too embarrassed about asking your parents. The majority of questions were about the first time and does it hurt? What was it like? First things first, it takes two to tango. If you're having sex with someone for the first time and you're with somebody who should know it's your first time because if they don't and they go at it like a rabbit, it's probably gonna hurt. But if you're with somebody who understands that and respects that, especially if you've had something up there before, if you know what I'm saying. I know tons of people that have said that the first and second times weren't even enjoyable because they, it just hurt too much for you to enjoy. I'll have to disagree with that because like I said, it depends on the person you're sleeping with and it also depends on preparing yourself like if you didn't like prepare yourself beforehand and you're just nervous and like all tense then it's going to hurt you just have to like relax give yourself a lot of time before the actual deal happens so personally I think that your first time should be with somebody that you really respect and care about and have been dating for a little while but that's my personal opinion even if you're somebody that isn't for that and you would just want to like sleep around with whoever you want which is totally cool as long as you're protected and like safe and stuff but I suggest your first time at least just to kind of be with somebody who you think won't be a regret because I know so many people that have slept with somebody just because they wanted to lose their virginity a couple years down the line they thought, I probably shouldn't have done that because A, was it not worth it? And B, I don't like that person anymore. And I think it's a nicer feeling when you know that you were ready. Even if at the time you were so desperate to get rid of it, eight times out of 10, I promise you, the person just said, I wish I just waited like a tiny bit longer, even like a couple months down the line when I actually found that person that I liked. And it may be the biggest mission in the world to try and get rid of your virginity. But when you do it, you're kind of like, well, that was an anti-climax because it probably will be. And they will probably make it more enjoyable for you because they know it's your first time whereas if it's just like a randomer or just somebody who is there at the time they might not know that or they might know it but not care there was another question which was what's your opinion on the right age to lose your virginity is there a right age what are your thoughts slash experiences on this personally obviously like there's an age where it's just like weird such as I'm talking like 13 14 I'm talking the age when I would just not even understand I was too busy roaming the streets and playing it with my friends but when you get to a certain age and you start liking people and you start learning about it and really just depend on how mature you are and there's laws and it's illegal if you're underage and all this but it depends if you feel like you're ready if you know your facts and you know what you're doing and if you're too shy to talk about sex with the person you're about to have sex with then you're not ready to have sex just like when you get to a certain age where you feel like you're doing it for the right reasons you know what you're doing and you've spoken about it and you're sensible and you're using protection 16 i would put it at as a young but acceptable age if you're with somebody who you consider very important because I could sit here and I could say you need to be 18 but that's just gonna make people who are younger than 18 be curious about sex and then they're gonna go do it behind their parents back and they're gonna do it unsafely but that's not really reality actually is it so the main point and the main focus is to let them know that they can do it but there's things that come with it that's more important than the age such as 
STDs and pregnancy and being pressurised into it. There was another question on my opinion on abortion and birth control. This kind of goes with the last one because like I said about the whole age thing, you can sit here and say you have to be 18, that's all good and dandy but then the people under 18 are going to be curious. You can't go around saying that birth control shouldn't be done and abortions shouldn't be legal because there are so many other ways to look at it. Imagine if somebody fell pregnant and they couldn't afford to have the baby or they got raped or they are too young or they're in a point in their lives where it is borderline impossible to have a baby in their lives. Let's say we go back in the olden days when abortion wasn't allowed. Women physically had to take the baby away from their body using coat hangers because they had no other option and then they got infected and they died or they lost blood or they were cut because they didn't do it properly and then they died. I would much rather live in a world where there was an option of abortion than a world where women felt like they couldn't go anywhere else but to risk their own lives. There's going to be so many people who are, have something to say about that but I strongly strongly feel that we live in a better world now than we did before. Everyone should be free to have birth control because if birth control wasn't available people would still have sex because people still want sex. Unwanted pregnancies will happen, there will be a dramatic rise, cause more people to want abortions which is a terrible terrible thing. It's what would happen if birth control wasn't as available as it is now so I, I'm completely for it. Unless the only reason you're having sex is to have a baby, which is absolutely awesome. Another question came from Brandy and she asks, most people have a misconception about pre-cum, saying that it can't get a woman pregnant. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that in the video, it's very much possible. So basically she's talking about pre-cum, which is what comes out of a penis before he ejaculates so hot and people think that it can't get you pregnant because it's like it's got no sperm in it which is true it doesn't but if the guy hasn't peed before he last ejaculated there could be like sperm left in there meaning that the pre-cum come through and then there's sperm in the pre-cum pregnant Woo, baby yeah or oh no there is a significantly less amount but there is still sperm in there so one little tiny tadpole finding your little egg Bam, baby, and there are millions of these tadpoles. Next question comes from Sammy. Were you scared when you had your first period? I'll be honest, I was. I thought I was gonna die. I wasn't scared. Like, I was a little bit scared, obviously, because it's like, oh my god, blood everywhere. Ugh, hide the walls. That's not that bad, really, not. Because I was quite old and I was waiting for it. I was like so ready for this. I had boobs and everything, but my period just took forever and I have no idea why like everything else was happening but the periods weren't basically me and my sister and my best friend Lorna we decided to have a sleepover in a tent which was a strange idea I know and then we kind of like came back into the house because it was the next day and she went home I sat in the toilet and I was like holy mother of Jesus and then so I had to you know like find I knew where all the stuff was in my bathroom because I'd seen it there for years like my mum like I have a house of sisters and my mum but then I wrote my mum a note saying <laughs> you'll be help. No, but I knew what I was doing. I was ready. I wasn't scared. So I had a best friend at school that started her period so early. I felt so bad for her because we had so many more years of just freedom and she was like, she was like out the womb and blood in everywhere. And it was like a kind of a competition. You know, like when guys are like, here, do you have pubes yet? It was kind of like, here, you on your period yet? And if you're an early developer and you start early, just don't be scared because you're going to be like pro and you're going to be regular when everyone else is just starting and they're going to be irregular and all over the place but by the time they get in like a pattern and they know when they're gonna come on every month you're gonna be like <laughs> That was me last year, bitch. But when you first start, they're all over the place. I remember me being like, okay, last month I was 21 days, and now I'm like 39. It's, but now I'm 32, it's okay. Everyone knows my, everyone knows my number. Yay, that was weird. The very last question comes from Beth, and she said, how would be the best way to tell your parents you started? Help needed. Uh, like I said, I'm the most awkward person ever, and I wrote a letter, and then she kind of just read it in her own time, and was like, okay. Cool. And it's not an awkward thing because your mum knew from the second she had you that you're gonna have to go through that one day. Like she is probably more prepared than you are. Or what you could do, if your mum wants a shopping list, you could kind of like put, I need pads or I need tampons on that. Cause my mum writes shopping lists. <laughs> Or if you have a sister or something, you could tell her to get her to tell your mum because she will probably feel less awkward than you if she's older than you. Or if you don't want to physically like say the words out of your mouth, like mum, I've just started my period, find where the stuff is kept in your bathroom, pick them up and be like, mum, can I use one of these? And she'd be like, oh, my girl's grown up. Whatever suits you, just do it. Send her an email for God's sake. Mum, start on my blog yesterday, just thought you should know because you're my mum and 
yeah, help. <laughs> Give me a comment down here in the comment section and just ask me them and then I'll probably make another video like this one and then just answer more questions similar to this video. I love you guys so much. I will see you in three days time. If you want to go on my own, any of my social networking sites and being more involved in videos and such, you can do that. There's a link down there in the description. Me and Lotso love you so, so much. I will see you very soon. Bye guys. <laughs> Still smells like strawberries. There's a little seahorse, there's a little poop, there's a pizza slice, there's a like coffee cup with a bit of sugar on it, and then there's a little pig, and then there's a little narwhal.